This is Midweek Politics with Dave Fackman. Hey, we've been talking about Stephen Anderson the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's the Arizona pastor who went on an incredible homophobic rant against Barack Obama and essentially claiming that there's a whole... I don't, did he actually use the term uh, homosexual mafia? I don't, we, we hear that term from a lot of people. I don't know if he actually used, he, if he went that crazy. I don't know. Uh, we know Michael Savage loves talking about the, the gay mafia that claims to control everything, yet somehow it's uh, only legal for homosexual couples to get married in four and a half, I guess now five, five states. Um, so we got some emails. How did this even start, Lewis? There were some comments made on YouTube. Uh, saying that I was a preteen liberal and uh, who knows what else. And that this man is brilliant or whatever. That Steven Anderson is brilliant. So last week we brought this up and we're still getting emails about Steven Anderson. And I actually got one from a Baptist, uh, I guess it's a Baptist preacher who says that they would like to come on the show because not all Baptist preachers are like Steven Anderson. And I never said that they were. Here's the email. Sir, I have listened to your show from time to time. And though I don't always agree with you, I still wanted to write you. On the issue of Stephen Anderson, please don't think that all Baptist preachers are like him. I believe he gives the rest of us a bad name. Yes, that, I agree with that. If you would ever allow another Baptist preacher to come on your show and explain what Baptists really believe without being hateful like Anderson, nowhere in the Bible are we supposed to hate anyone. We are to hate the sin, but love the sinner. So in that, I actually still hear that homosexuality is a sin. We just shouldn't hate the sinners. We right. should hate I'm, the I'm sure that's a, you know, that's unanimous among Baptists, I'm sure. Right. The Bible also tells us to obey to those that have the rule over us. That includes the president. If I can be any help, email me, so on and so forth. Not everybody is like Stephen Anderson or Shirley Phelps Roper from the Westboro Baptist Church. Well, th this, this listener is right about one thing, which is that Stephen Anderson does give Baptists a bad name, just like Pat Robertson right. gives all Christians a bad name when he says that Haiti made a pact with the devil and that the Haitian earthquake is punishment for making that pact. But when I read this email, even saying Baptists are supposed to obey those that have the rule over them, that sounds a little nutty to me because it's the opposite way. You can't dissent. You have to obey those like the president that have rule over you. Remember the whole dissent is patriotic versus uh, dissent is not patriotic during the Bush administration? This reeks of the same thing to me, which is that you should obey those that have power over you. I don't hear the difference. No, um, and strange that he'd bring that up. But I guess, you know, this guy was talking about Obama. Well, it, we'll keep this in mind. Maybe this will be a segment at some point in the future. We've had no shortage of religious, uh, of religious individuals on the show lately with a variety of of opinions and not all extreme like the Westboro Baptist Church or Stephen Anderson. No, no, we, we weren't trying to bash any religions, just, you know, letting people know that uh, there are people out there like this and that others follow these people and, right. and listen to their advice. They aren't, these aren't lone wolves, right? They're act, there's actually, right. they have a contingent, they have a posse that apparently goes around the internet posting to YouTube that this guy, Stephen Anderson, is, is some kind of incredible spiritual leader by throwing around the F word. Uh, Tim Tebow, we talked last week. Sum up the Tim Tebow thing for us, Lewis, because you're more familiar with this than I am. Uh, Florida college quarterback, just graduated, headed for the NFL. Uh, very religious, very religious guy and uh, well known for that, you know, under his uh, black, uh, you know. The eye, eye black. Eye black, yeah, he writes... Uh, the numbers of, of Bible passages or, or something like that. Right. And the controversy that's come up is that he's going to be, his, he and his family are going to be the focal point of a Super Bowl commercial that's going to, it's scheduled to air as of now. It hasn't been canceled. A pro-life commercial. It's a pro-life and really pretty violently anti-abortion anti commercial. He was asked to talk about, to address the controversy that's going on. I can't understand a word he's saying. And I know that I have trouble understanding Sarah Palin. This it sounds like mumbo mumbo jumbo to me again, where he's just rattling off as many words, the longest words he knows, all put together. T take a listen to this. Well, um, I think you know either whatever you know what people think about it. I think um, I know a lot of people. I mean, some people won't agree <laughs> with it, you know. But I think they can at least um, you know, respect that that I stand up for what I believe, and um, and I'm never you know shy about that. I don't feel like I'm very pre preachy about it, but I do stand up for what I believe, and at least you can respect that because I do stand up. And um, unfortunately, in today's society, not many athletes tend to do that. Uh, at least stand for something. 
And so, um, I, I, I'm going to tell our audience, I have not doctored the clip in any way. That's really, that's his delivery. That's what he's saying. That is how he's, he is presenting his case and he's going to participate in this thing. It, it's, it's similar to the McCain pre-election mumbo jumbo, is it not? For anybody is, it's tired of paying $4 a, a, a buck, $4 a gallon for gasoline. So getting, getting himself mixed up, and I get it. Tim Tebow is not used to talking to people about abortion, right? He's talk, used to talking about football. There's this entire mythology that's kind of growing around uh, this noble missionary, Tim Tebow's mom, who carried her child to term against her doctor's advice. That's the story that she was in the Philippines. She was pregnant with Tim Tebow. She was being encouraged to have an abortion, and she decided incredibly miraculously to carry him to term, and she, uh, he grew up to become a devout Christian and a football star. There is now some question about whether that's the truth. Have you heard about this? No. Uh, Joe Jervis points out that even though we've been hearing the propaganda for weeks now about Tim Tebow's mother and she was confronted with this difficult pregnancy, encouraged to have an abortion, the, uh, there is some evidence that this is, is, is not necessarily made up, but that it can't possibly be that way. Gloria Allred, a well-known feminist but pro-choice lawyer, said that there is some factual inconsistencies here with Pam Tebow's story. The big one being that abortion is totally illegal in the majority of Catholic countries, including the Philippines. And uh, in the Philippines, even more so under circumstances of rape and incest, it's still illegal even without this provision in case the mother's life is in danger. And this law has been effect, in effect since 1930. Gloria Allred believes it's impossible to believe that Filipino doctors would ever have suggested abortion as a viable option for Tebow in the first place. And when you learn that physicians and midwives who perform abortions in the F Philippines face six years in prison and can even have their licenses suspended or revoked, it makes it hard to believe, does it not? Uh, I suppose it does. You know, I, I can tell you're hesitant because you're not that familiar with the, the law of the Philippines well, to, to comment too much on this. Um, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you know. To me, this is this is a question that needs to be I think be a asked. lot of people come up with, uh, you know, bend the truth a little bit and come up with inspirational stories like this. I mean, especially someone in her position. You so know. you're thinking maybe the truth isn't that it's completely made up. But it's also not true she was encouraged to have an abortion. Maybe the truth is someone told her they know a place she can go to have yeah. an off-the-record abortion. Like, look, you know, th this could be hazardous to your health. Maybe you sh should consider, you know... An illegal abortion. An illegal abortion. You know, maybe one person suggested that. She was like, hey, you know what? No, I, I don't... I think that's a bad idea. Well, maybe the Tebos need to change the wording of this ad to she turned down the only abortion offered in the Philippines in over 60 years. And then the, the ad would be a little more accurate. Perhaps. You think this will air? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it will. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that.